Hi everybody, IKEA is one of the most innovative companies of the 21st century. And the most astonishing thing about IKEA is that in spite of furniture being a highly localized business, IKEA has been the pioneer in turning the furniture business into a global success. And today, IKEA draws in a revenue of $45 billion from 445 stores spread across 30 countries. And what's more important to note is not the growth of the company, but the fact that IKEA taught the world how to use the most powerful psychological tactics to exponentially increase sales. And today, you are going to learn one such strategy that makes IKEA stand apart from the competition. And no matter which business you are in, no matter which field you are in, you can use these powerful psychological strategies to double your profits at zero cost. The question is, what is this strategy? How does it make IKEA stand apart from the rest of the competition? And most importantly, how can you use them to double your profits? This video is brought to you by a special announcement from the Think School community. But more on this at the end of the video. The answer to this lies in a fascinating experiment conducted by Dan Ariali with his students at the MIT. In the first iteration, Dan went to his class of 100 students and asked them to choose between two subscription plans for the international magazine called The Economist. Now let's do this experiment together so you tell me which one of these options would you choose, okay? So the three options were the digital version for $59, the print version for $125 and thirdly the print plus digital version for the same $125. As it turns out, 16% students wanted the digital version, 0% wanted the print version for $125 and 84% of them chose the print plus digital option. So for the second iteration, he makes a small change. He thought, since nobody is buying the second option, then why keep it there in the first place, right? So he removed the $125 print option and presented the same question to another class of 100 students. Now technically, by eliminating the option that nobody chose, the results are not supposed to change, right? Well, guess what? In the second scenario, the results changed drastically. And this time, only 32% of the students opted for the print plus digital version. And 68% of them opted for the just digital version subscription. And that is when Dan realized that there was something magical about this unnecessary option that made such a huge difference in the choice of the customers. And that is what we call as the decoy effect. The decoy effect says that consumers change their preferences between two options when presented with a third option, which acts as an unattractive option just to make the other options look extremely lucrative. Now, when I say decoy effect, most people think about the popcorn example, wherein in the movie houses, you get popcorn of small, medium and large at a price of 300 rupees, 650 rupees and 700 rupees. And because of the decoy effect, people tend to choose the 700 rupees option. Now, although this is technically correct, it is the worst possible example to use. Why? Because if you look at the underlying message that is being communicated to the customers, this is what the options indirectly tell the customers. Option A, overpay for the popcorn. Option B, extremely overpay for the popcorn. And option C, extreme overpay for the popcorn with a little extra popcorn. And the basic flaw over here is that the prices over here can in no way justify the value for the popcorn. Therefore, by default, making the purchase of that popcorn becomes a painful experience. This is the reason why we often feel guilty for buying popcorns. And if you're a person like me, you and I, we will not even think about buying a popcorn at the theater. Now, when this is done in a close and compulsive environment like a theater, it will definitely work. But if the same is done in the free market, this strategy will backfire in a terrible way. And if you give your customers this kind of a painful experience while paying for your product, the customers will never buy from you. Eventually, it will result into extremely heavy losses. So the question over here is, what exactly is the right way to apply the decoy effect? And that is where, ladies and gentlemen, IKEA's genius application comes in. To tell you about it, this is how IKEA applies the decoy effect. IKEA places three cabinets for you. Cabinet A, B and C. A costs $40, B costs $60 and C costs $65. Option A is a very small cabinet with very smooth movement, but it's got very small space. Plus, the material used would be very ordinary. 
Option C will be a large cabinet with premium handles, premium material and most importantly, it will offer a large storage space. Along with that, you will also get a $10 worth of compartment as complimentary if you buy option C. And then you got option B which is as large as C but it is made out of ordinary material, does not have premium handles and you will not get complimentary compartments. And here's where the catch comes in. If you look at the underlying message that IKEA is trying to communicate using its products, here's what they say. Option A says, here's a budget product with a great value for money. Option C says, here's a premium product plus large space plus delightful complimentary product. So very, very high value for money. And lastly, you've got option B, which is almost the same price, but without premium build quality, without complimentary compartments. So not so much of a value for money as compared to option C. So this way, option B acts as the decoy so that when you compare option B with option C, option C looks like an amazing deal. Now while most sellers only think about the people who would directly buy option C, IKEA understands that a 22 year old boy who just moved into the city will not be able to afford a $65 product, which is why he would buy the $40 product. But when he does, IKEA wants to make sure that he does not regret the purchase. So even though it's a low margin product, in the race of upselling, IKEA will never ever try to rip off its customers who've got low purchase power. And the best part is, the decoy effect over here doesn't just make option C look great, it also makes option A look great because the customers feel like they would have overpaid by choosing option B, which is 50% more costlier as compared to option A. So by default, the budget buyer buys the smaller drawer set and the premium customers, they buy the $65 product. Why? Because they compare it with the decoy. And this clean execution of the decoy effect gives the IKEA brand three wonderful superpowers. Number one, irrespective of their purchase, both types of customers get value for their money. Secondly, the premium customers have been tactfully influenced to buy the $65 product. And because the $60 product was such a bad deal, the premium customers actually feel very good about the purchase. And most importantly, when the 22 year old boy is extremely satisfied with his $40 purchase, tomorrow when he grows up and makes a handsome income, he will again choose IKEA, but this time as a premium customer. Because he was given the value for money that he was promised even at the $40 price tag. Therefore, customer retention of the IKEA brand increases by a large extent. This is how you actually apply the decoy effect. So while most sellers often use pricing strategies with the sole intent to upsell, the IKEA team constantly keeps learning and carefully deploys its strategies in a way that it drives profits but at the same time, it retains its brand value. And the most amusing thing over here is that IKEA does this literally for every single one of its 12,000 products starting from affordable drawers all the way up to the premium beds and even wardrobes. Now again, this might look very easy to some people, but here's something that nobody will tell you. If you take a step back guys, you will realize that it is extremely difficult to maintain this fine balance between profit and brand value, especially when you're as big as IKEA with 445 stores spread across 30 different countries with 2.1 billion visitors who are coming from different cultures from all across the world. And the only reason why they're able to execute this strategy is because of IKEA's powerful philosophy of democratic design and lifelong learning culture. Every time IKEA enters a country, the IKEA team specifically studies every little aspect of that place, starting from the average balcony size all the way up to the average spoon size. This is done just so that IKEA could fit into the cultural framework of any country. Therefore, even when you apply this strategy, always make sure that you constantly keep learning about the customer's reaction and keep a very close eye on the customer's culture, purchase power and their spending habits. Because only then, you'll be able to understand how to strike a balance between profit and brand value. And this brings me to the most important part of the episode and that is, as a businessman or a businesswoman, what is the step-by-step -step process to apply the decoy effect and what are the study materials to help you dive deeper into the superpower of pricing? Meanwhile, if you are someone who wants to learn how to tell powerful stories like we do at Think School, I would highly recommend you to take up our Communication Masterclass course. Communication Masterclass is our first step to put a dent in the Indian education system. 
And this course will teach you the most important skill of the 21st century and that is the art of communication. Communication Masterclass is a six weeks course that will take you step by step to turn you into an incredible communicator. The best part is that it is a self-paced course with one full year of access. So you can practically do it anytime as per your convenience. Apart from that, if you have any doubts regarding the course, I will personally be going live at the end of the week just to clear your doubts and to help you extract the best out of the course. Cherry on the cake, we also have a wonderful community of people from all across the world who will be there to support you to turn you into a wonderful communicator. This course contains worksheets, exercises and world-class case studies like Hitler's speech analysis and even Cadbury's secret storytelling technique. So if you are comfortable with my method of teaching, use the link below, sign up for the masterclass and I will see you during the live session. Moving on to the application, here are 5 very very important steps that you need to follow when you apply the deco effect to your products. Step number 1. Do a thorough research and find out which is the most popular and profitable product in your store. Step number 2. If it is a premium product, find a budget substitute for the same product such that people who cannot afford the premium one can still fulfill their need with the budget product. Why? Because budget customers will soon become your premium customers. Therefore, engaging with them should never ever be underestimated. Step number three would be to create a decoy. And the point to be noted over here is that your decoy must not be a degraded version of your premium product. However, the premium product should have a way better offering than your decoy. So if you're selling drawers, it's okay to have a non-premium material, but it shouldn't be like the drawers are rigid and they are very badly functional. Why? Because people, even the decoy is going to reflect your brand value. So always try to make the premium product more attractive with complementary offerings rather than purposefully degrading the decoy. Step number four would be to price your products in a way that the premium product looks way better than the decoy and the budget product or option A looks like the obvious choice for the customers with a lower purchase power. This way, your high margin product will become extremely lucrative, driving very high sales and at the same time, the budget customers will also be very happy to get the value for their money. In fact, those people will be even more happy because they didn't have to pay 50% extra just to get a bad deal on the decoy. And lastly, do not add more than 5 products and make sure that the price of the decoy is very close or even equal to the premium product. Now the disclaimer over here is that in the greed for more profits, please don't misuse the decoy effect. Because people always remember, in the free market, the customers are just one step away from leaving you forever. This is how, ladies and gentlemen, you can apply the decoy effect to your products and when done right, it can increase both your conversion rates and your profit margins by a large extent. Meanwhile, if you are someone who wants to dive deep into the philosophies of pricing and consumer psychology, I would highly recommend you to read this book called Misbehaving by Richard Thaler, which has now become my standard recommendation. And the second book is this book called Nudge, written by the same author. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.